Hello, I'm State Representative Tony Berkeley from the 82nd House District, and welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Brad Miller. Today I'm speaking with State Representative Tony Berkeley, who serves the 82nd House District, which includes Defiance, Paulding, and Van Wert counties, as well as parts of Audley's County. Representative, thanks for sitting down with us today. Glad to be here. So you are nearing six months in office in your first term as a state representative. Um, can you talk, before we get started with some of the legislation that you've been working uh, with, can you talk about your previous experience in public service? Yeah, I've uh, had a little bit of government experience in the past, uh, uh, which has helped me uh, transition to this, uh, this position. Uh, I was uh, commissioner in Paulding County for 16 years, and I, I really enjoyed my uh, time as commissioner. I, I worked with some very uh, talented people and uh, I, had, I had fun doing it so it was a good experience for me and I uh, have uh, used that experience uh, as we've uh, transitioned into this uh, new position as state representative. Um, and you've also had uh, 40 years or more in the private sector as a small business owner or with your uh, family business that you own. Um, can you talk about that? Yeah, it's a family business uh, and, and kind of the backbone of, uh, of America, I think, uh, is the small family businesses. Uh, my father started this uh, business uh, back in the early 60s, uh, uh, and uh, I eventually uh, uh, bought it uh, from him in the early 90s and uh, uh, kind of transitioned uh, uh, the business on. I, I was happy to go on uh, continuing the small business. A lot of uh, family businesses don't carry on, and uh, we were happy to uh, be able to continue that business. Great. Um, so as someone who's seen both sides now of both uh, local government and state government, as well as private sector, public sector, um, can you talk briefly about the importance of maintaining consistent communication with all these different groups? Well, many times what happens is uh, if you get disconnected from where you came from, uh, things don't happen uh, like you would like them to happen. Uh, so the more you can ground yourself with uh, the people back home, uh, the struggles that they go through, whether they be uh, uh, as a business owner or as just a, the average citizen, uh, the more you can interact with them, the better off you are when things become uh, come before you and, and you, you see how that impacts uh, people's lives. So uh, it's, it's valuable to, to get back into the community and to interact with uh, people around you. So as I mentioned at the top, um, almost six months into office, what has the experience been like so far? One of the, the more pleasant things I, I've uh, come across is, is some of the people that I've been able to work with. Uh, it, you know, I, I expected more polarization uh, from when I uh, had heard uh, maybe, uh, and uh, I've I've really had a great experience uh, interacting with uh, fellow elected officials and and uh, realizing that uh, they come from different backgrounds that I came from uh, in many cases, but they still have the same goal of making Ohio the best uh, state that it can be. And so that's been pleasant uh, an experience uh, on my part to get to be able to work with some of those people and, and where there's agreement, uh, you can move things forward and, and that's been uh, enjoyable. So you represent District 82 out of 99 total House districts in Ohio. Um, each one is unique in its own way. Uh, what are some of the issues currently facing your district, would you say? Well, uh, I come from a very agricultural uh, background uh, district, and so anything that uh, affects agriculture uh, is important to me. Uh, there's uh, uh, one of the areas too that uh, is in my district is Grand Lake St. Mary's, so that's always a concern uh, uh, that I have when when we're talking about things happening in the state. Uh, I also have uh, some industry in my uh, district, uh, so you always got to remember uh, how uh, heavy industry is, is affected by legislation too. So you just keep those things in mind as uh, things come up. 
Uh, we're going to move into some of the pieces of legislation you've been working on. Um, the first one is uh, touches on an issue called TIF or TIFs. Um, let's take this step by step. Can you first tell us what TIF stands for and what its purpose is? Yes, uh, TIF is uh, tanks, Tax Increment Financing and it's just a tool that's used by uh, local governments to finance, uh, could be uh, a road project, some infrastructure project, uh, uh, anything that, that might be needed to either uh, mitigate something that has, uh, will be affected by a business coming in or it could be something that would uh, help a business to locate in your area. Uh, there's a number of things that can be used for, so it's a valuable tool, and so this one of the parts of this uh, legislation is to try to make that tool a little bit better uh, as it's being used in the state. Um, I was reading something about the legislation that gave a hypothetical example, but it talked about a local government creating a TIF district, which is what it would be, and it mentioned uh, two pieces of land, say A and B, um, and uh, the local government would spend uh, or would use uh, bond revenue to build up, say, infrastructure to attract a business, but then another part of the district would be restricted from doing that later. How does that work? Is that correct? Well, in the county that I served as as, as commissioner, uh, we had used TIFs uh, on a pretty regular basis, but most of ours were specific TIFs, TIFs for a specific parcel of land. There is what's called a, a TIF district. Uh, in the TIF district, you can put many parcels of, of uh, into one district. The problem you have with, uh, say, you've got two uh, or multiple parcels of land with two different loan landowners. Uh, landowner A uh, has a potential business that's coming in, and so the TIF is used and the whole, the, both parcels are put into the district uh, to sub, may, maybe put a road to uh, parcel A. <clears throat> well, when parcel B has a potential business or some, something that wants to come in uh, and they want to put a, a, a road going to that business or some other water and sewer or some project that goes to that district, those funds cannot be used on that project because they're all tied up in the fir first parcel A. So we just want to give the uh, landowners in the district uh, that's being created the opportunity if, if the potential is there for their uh, parcel to be developed that they have the resources necessary uh, to help in their project too uh, and not all tied up into the first project. So, so what uh would this legislation do specifically? How would it benefit municipalities, local governments, and even businesses? Well, what the, what would happen would be there would be a, a public hearing, and uh, if your parcel was part of the district that was being created, uh, you would receive notice, uh, and you would have the opportunity to say, uh, yes, this uh, district is going to be benefit my parcel, uh, in addition to the one that's being developed, uh, say it's getting water and sewer uh, to that district, then it's going to be real close to mine, so mine will be benefited from it. If you find benefit in, in the district that's being created uh, with your parcel, you can uh, sign on and say, uh, you know, I have no objection to this uh, uh, development, and uh, you'll be part of the process. If, if in, in another case, if you think... Uh, uh, parcel A and my parcel are uh, competitors, and you think that maybe uh, for my dis my parcel to be developed, uh, I will need some future uh, TIF uh, resources, then you have the option to opt out of that district. Uh, and it, it just gives the landowner uh, some some rights that, that currently does not exist in a district. So uh, that's the uh, how I do behind it. And you're joint sponsoring that uh, bill with Representative Jim Butler. Um, another important issue that you've worked with, um, earlier this year you hosted a uh, roundtable discussion with employers and business owners uh, from throughout Northwest Ohio um, with the administrator of the Bureau of Workers' Compensation, Steve Buer. Um, what can you tell us about that meeting 
and what are some of the concerns facing uh, BWC uh, workers' comp? Well, one of the things that I wanted to address in, the, in this meeting uh, was that uh, uh, the Bureau of Workers' Comp is, is one of those areas in, in state government that uh, the business community uh, has either loves or hates. Uh, and so the more we can improve that uh, product, I think the better off we're going to be. So I called uh, uh, or asked uh, the director if he would be able to uh, attend a meeting where we could address those issues that were coming before them and and see if there's ways that we could make the the system uh, better and I was happy to say that uh, there were uh, 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 several uh, business community leaders that that were able to uh, uh, come to the uh, the meeting and they they expressed a lot of good ideas and some of them uh, I think uh, were well received by the Bureau of Workers Comp and I think they're they're going to try to implement uh, some of those uh, uh, some of those questions and, and uh, suggestions that they had. So it was well received by the business community and I think well received by Bureau of Workers' Comp. Um, I want to spend some time uh, talking about the committees that you serve on. Um, reading through them, it seems like the committees you serve on are perfectly tailored to your background and your experience. Um, agriculture and natural resources, obviously you mentioned Northwest Ohio is rich in agriculture. Um, state and local government, you were a county commissioner, now a state legislator, uh, and the Economic Development and Regulatory Reform Committee. You had 40 years in the private sector. What does it mean to you uh, to work on these committees and on issues that uh, reflect your areas of expertise? Uh, you know, at the beginning of the, uh, the General Assembly, you're asked what committees you'd like to serve on, and, and I just took a, a look at the list of, of the various committees, and I thought, you know, uh, there wouldn't be a better fit for me than uh, ag and natural resources, and so uh, you know I, I listed that one. And uh, my experience, like you said, in in, in local government, uh, really uh, was tailored uh, for my uh, experience and, and background. And uh, of course, the the the, uh, the third one that you'd mentioned, I was really uh, uh, happy that the uh, speaker was uh, uh, gracious enough to put me on uh, on those three uh, committees and. Uh, you know, I think it it not only helps me in those uh, committee settings, but also uh, benefits my uh, district in that uh, when legislation comes before those committees, it more often than not will directly affect uh, how we function in Northwest Ohio. So I was uh, very pleased with that uh, those selections, and uh, I look. I'm really having fun in uh, in those in those committee meetings. It's it's a good experience for me. Good. Um, the summer is always a busy time. Uh, you'll be here at the state house, but also uh, spending a lot of time back in the district. Um, what are some of the things coming up? Well, you know, it's always fair season, and uh, and when you serve four counties, uh, there's always a, a a county fair or a, a festival that's going on, and. Uh, uh, it's just an opportunity for me to get out there and uh, uh, talk to the people that are actually in the district and, and to hear some of the concerns they have. And, and you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, good legislation that actually comes with just interacting with uh, the, the people that are out there. Uh, I have uh, people that are, uh, you know, they talk to me and they say, uh, uh, I'm having this issue or this uh, problem and it'll, It'll generate a thought, and that thought will, will uh, go into a uh, uh, a bill that that maybe uh, uh, come about that would address that particular issue. And uh, so it's always good to to get those uh, interactions with the community out there that you serve. We have about a minute left uh, for the for your constituents, people in the district who want to uh, contact you here at your office. Um, what are the easiest ways for them to do that? Uh, just to, to pick up the phone is the easiest way. You can leave a message and uh, we would uh, welcome those uh, conversations and we would get back to them as, as quickly as we could. Uh, email is always a, another good uh, opportunity to uh, uh, getting something in uh, uh, a document form anyway so we have something to reference back to uh, if there's a particular uh, problem or issue that uh, they'd like us to, to look into. Uh, you know, I, I'm always available uh, uh, through either one of those forms. Uh, I'm always happy to uh, be of service to that in that area. 
And that information's uh, at the bottom of the screen. Representative, thanks for taking time with us today. It's a pleasure. We look forward to seeing you again on the next edition of Ohio in Focus, the program that brings state government to you. Thanks for watching.